Hi, I'm Charles Pearson. Welcome. I'm going to take you through approximately 45 minutes of Hatha core uh, sequence. And if you'll just follow along, I'm going to provide cues, modifications, and I'm also going to talk to benefits of the practice as we progress. So if you'll start by coming down to your mat and just gently take yourself down to the mat. We always want to warm up and first find our breath, ground ourselves onto the mat. You can bring your feet together, knees apart. This is called bound angle or baddha konasana, supta baddha konasana. And just relax yourself down onto the mat. You can take a brick or something to support your head so that your neck is more comfortably aligned. And you can also take your left hand to your chest and your right hand to your abdomen and just close your eyes down for just a few moments. Find your breath. Notice where your breath is traveling into. We often breathe very short breaths into our chest when really what we want to do is relax the abdomen and allow the breath to travel down into the abdomen, allowing that diaphragm to press down. So begin to improve on your breath by breathing in and out of your nose. And as you do so, try to expand the breath. So we breathe in and out of our nose and we maybe count for three or four seconds on the inhale. Take a pause and then the same or a little bit longer on the exhale. And take a pause. So we're breathing in and out of the nose to filter the breath to control the breath, to calm the nervous system. Take a few more breaths in your own time. And this breath is what you'll want to sustain throughout the practice or come back to during the practice because the breath will help you. It'll help you stay focused. It will help you find space in your body. It will help you concentrate, keep your mind clear. One more breath here. And then gently open up your eyes, gently assist your knees back to center. We'll take our knees up and we'll begin with a simple supine twist. Allow your arms to extend out as you take your knees to the side, maybe assist with your right hand. And then your view can be either to the ceiling or off to the opposite direction. Just warming up so it doesn't have to be your biggest, strongest twist yet. And just breathe, feel as if you're breathing into this left lung. One more breath here. And then on your inhale, bring your knees back to center and then take the knees off to the other side. Left hand can assist. You can take your view to the opposite side. Just beginning to warm up the spine in this relatively simple twist. And try to keep practicing that breath in and out of the nose, expansive breath, calming breath. One more breath. And then inhale back to center. And then we'll just take a happy baby. So we'll reach up, but then we'll lower our head back down. And if you can't grab on to your feet, the outside of your feet or your toes, just grab onto your ankles or maybe take a strap if you have one and you can like so come into a happy baby. We're right at the beginning of the practice. So it takes a little while for your hips to warm up and open up. But in happy baby, either with the strap or with your hands, you're just pulling those knees down in the direction toward your armpits beyond your shoulders. 
opening up the groin, relaxing your head and your neck, your shoulders are pressed down into the mat. And you can roll from side to side as I'm doing here, or just remain still. One more breath here. And then release. And then take a grip just below the knees, underneath your legs. And then we're gonna roll up. You can take a couple of rolls as you then come forward and cross your legs or take your legs around in order to come forward into an all fours position. That's where we'll meet. So in our all fours position, we take time to set up. We almost always begin a yoga sequence in this position. We want our shoulders on top of our wrist creases. Our hips are on top of our knees. When we look back between our legs, we want to see that we can't see our calves or our feet. And then what we do often is we'll begin with our cat and cow warm up. And our cat and cow warm up is to create as much space between the vertebra and also the three portions of the spine, the lumbar, the thoracic, and the cervical spine to create movement. So the first thing we'll do is we'll curl our tailbone, we'll soften our tummy, then we'll pull our chest forward and crown of the head comes forward all on the inhale. When we exhale, we want to first curl the tailbone, then the thoracic spine, then the crown of the head comes down and we create that angry cat, that rounding. Then when we come back onto the inhale, again, try to start with the tailbone first, then the middle spine. Notice the crown of my head is still facing downward toward the mat. And then the last thing to lift might take a couple of inhales is the crown of the head. Again, initiating with the tailbone, then the middle spine, and eventually the cervical spine and crown of the head comes down into our cat. And then one more time, we'll come forward, and this time we'll come back to neutral. So you can do, when you practice on your own, you can do many more of these. We really want to warm up the spine. It's so integral to everything that we'll do in our practice. So now we'll tuck our toes under, and we're going to press up into Downward Facing Dog, Adha Mukha Savanasana. When we do so, we're just going to come up by about an inch with the knees. So we're just warming up that core. The core, we want to feel that activation. And then we'll keep the knees bent as much as you possibly can as we lengthen the spine. So we often think and confuse that we think for Downward Facing Dog that it's about the opening of the back of the legs, but actually it's the lengthening in the space in the spine, and that's what we want to concentrate on. Eventually, we get the heels down, and we can take them down, but we keep the knees bent, toes are turned slightly inward, heels slightly out as we press through. Lengthening, relax the head and the neck, and then we're going to continue with this flow, and really good for our core for bone density, for strength of the arms. We're gonna roll forward. You may need to adjust the length. This is the length that you wanna keep between the hands and the feet. We come into plank pose, falakasana. So very strong here. Try to keep a straight line. Bum is neither sinking or lifted. And then we'll come back into downward facing dog. Do a couple more of these. You can bend the knees as much as you need at this point, or start to straighten them, and then roll forward. Really strengthening for the core, looking slightly ahead of the mat. Notice the heart rate will come up. Breathe, and then inhale as you lift. And then we'll come forward once more. And then we'll come into a three-legged plank. So take your left foot off the mat, just about an inch or two. You don't have to take it too high at all. And breathe, press through. You're creating that angry cat as you do so. And then left foot down, right foot up. Really, really strengthening for the arms, the back, the spine. And right foot down. Press through, strong, and then knees come down. So we'll come into a resting pose, extended child's pose, Utita Balasana. So knees are apart, 
feet are together, we're reaching forward. This is an active one at this point in time. It's a resting pose with the hips are sitting down on the heels, but I'd like you to then press your fingertips into the mat as your palms come up and you've got activation in that cervical spine area, the muscles all around the neck and the upper back. Take a couple of breaths here. In and out of the nose. And then palms come down. And then let's slide our hands over to the left. Right hand on top of the left. Resting your forehead down. Keeping those hips settled onto the heels. And in this position, you can twist to your right. Always we want to lengthen the spine before we twist. so that we don't get any compression. Find more space that way. One more breath here. Inhaling back to center. And then take it over to the other side. So sliding your hands to the right side, left hand on top of the right. Settling down. Once you've lengthened, then you can twist. You should feel really strong stretch and opening on the left side body from the waist all the way through those fingertips. One more breath here. Inhale back to center. And then press yourself up into all fours. And from all fours, check to see that your waist is on top of your knees and we're going to come down into a puppy dog pose. You might need to move yourself back a little bit further on your mat and you reach forward and soften down. And we're trying to open up the shoulder girdle here and the middle spine, the thoracic spine. You can take your forehead down onto the mat, your forearms. If your forehead is down on the mat, you might want to try to take your chin down. Strong stretch. Always want to be very gentle as you come into this. Begins to feel really nice. Opening the shoulder girdle, getting that middle spine open. One more breath here. And then gently press yourself back up into all fours. And then we're going to come up to, into downward facing dog again. And then this time when we come up into downward facing dog, maybe you want to pedal out the legs a bit, start to get some opening in the back of the legs at the same time as keeping that length in the spine. And then take your left foot back. Rather than taking it high, we want to take it back and lengthen, almost like we're trying to touch the wall behind us. And then we're going to bend, strengthening the core, bringing that knee up toward our chest, shifting the weight forward, and then very quietly take that left foot forward. And you may need to adjust and assist as you bring it between those hands and then gently take your right knee down and press yourself up into a low lunge, Anjani Asana. So in low lunge, we always want to get our positioning first. We're strengthening this front leg. We're opening this right hip flexor. And once we've got our balance, it's challenging our balance, then we'll take our arms up. Lots of options with the arms. You can extend them straight up if that feels nice to you and comfortable. You can bring your hands together if you've done so. Maybe take a small back bend. We're feeling the opening in the right hip flexor, strengthening in the front left leg, and also opening the chest in this back bend. Or if your shoulders are bothering you, you can come to a gold post, shoulders, or even maybe hands to heart center, and you can still have a back bend in this position. And then we're going to open to the right side. So when you open to the right side, try to keep the lunge. Strong arms, always with energy in our fingertips, either closed or together, maybe looking back behind you or looking to your side. One more breath here. And then inhale back to center. And then take your hands down, tuck your right toes under, press yourself back into downward facing dog. 
Take a breath or two, maybe more opening in the spine, more length, more opening in the back of the legs, pedaling out or remaining still. And then let's take the right foot back behind us and then bend it forward, shift your weight and take it forward. Assist as you need to, take your left knee down, relax the top of your foot down behind you and press yourself up into low lunge. Anjaneyasana. Once you've got your balance, make sure that the knee is not surpassing that front foot. Otherwise, adjust. Make sure you've got good opening here for this left hip flexor. So important as we make our way through our practice and arms can come up or any other alternative you want. And breathe. And whenever we're taking a back bend, we want to think about length. We're looking up to the ceiling but we're not crunching back. We're taking ourselves up and then allowing ourselves to extend back. We're in a back bend no matter how far we go. And then opening to the left side. Be sure to lunge, opening that chest to the side, maybe looking back behind you, energy through those fingertips closed or together. Probably getting a bit sweaty at this point. It's all good. One more breath. Inhale back to center. Hands come down, tuck the left toes under, press yourself back into downward facing dog. And take a breath or two here. And then we're gonna walk our feet forward. Try to take as few steps as you can as you walk yourself forward to your hands. And when you get there, you want your knees bent as much as possible at the start. And then feet are hip width apart, toes turn slightly inward, heels slightly out. And to judge the hip width, take your two fists together. And that should be the right distance for you. Bending the knees, taking a rag doll, Uttanasana. You could bend your, uh, take your opposite elbows. We're breathing. We're trying to get the top of the body down onto the top of the legs. If you've got the length and you're able to straighten, but keeping and preserving that closeness, then go ahead and do that. And you can sway your upper body from side to side. And you then release the hands. Let's grip the big thumbs. We'll come into Padagustasana, grip with your thumbs. Uh, your big toes with your thumbs and your index and middle finger. And then we're going to inhale as we lengthen the spine, crown of the head comes forward. And then as we exhale, we're pulling and allowing those elbows to come out to the side as we pull ourselves down even further. Let's take another inhale, lengthening the spine, crown of the head is going forward. And then exhale, really using the leverage of the strength in the upper body and creating more space in the spine. Not, it's not a focus on the opening in the back of the legs. One more time, inhale for length, and then exhale. And then release. Bend the knees if you're not already bending your knees, just a bit. We always wanna bend the knees before we press up to standing. And then on the inhale, and always inhaling, on the, on the uh, as we come up, rolling ourselves up one vertebra at a time, the head is the last to lift as we come up to standing. So once we're in standing, we're going to practice some balancing. So we'll begin in mountain pose, Tadasana. Again, feet hip width apart, toes turn slightly in, standing upright. Roll your shoulders back and down. The palms will start to turn toward the front. And then we'll bring our hands to heart center. Namaskarasana. And then we're going to lift our right knee into Pawan Muktasana. And then we'll open up to Janu Hastasana. So we're trying to open that right hip. The knee is heading out to the side, chest is open, strong base leg. One more breath. 
And then knee comes back to center, hands back to heart center, and with control, we'll come back down. Hands by your side. So we shift the weight, strong base leg, hands come to heart center, lifting left knee, get your balance. Breathe, concentrate, then open the left knee, opening the hip, chest, challenging our balance. One more breath, then hands to heart center, knee down, back to Tadasana. So we'll come into our chair pose, Utkatasana. So for chair pose, you can keep the feet hip width apart, or you can bring your toes together, heels apart. If you have anything going on with your lower back, best to take hip width apart if you have any pain going on in the lumbar spine. So we'll sit down into our chair pose. We sit down into an imaginary chair. Arms can come straight up, but lots of options with the arms here as well. You could take the hands to heart center. You can come to gold post, whatever feels most comfortable or keep them separated. So we're sitting down, really strong pose here, strengthening the lower body, glutes all the way through the, to the ankle joints and lengthening the spine. You can look up as well. One more breath and then press up to standing, arms by your side. Now we'll come into a low chair so we'll sit down into low chair. We can come down a bit further. Make sure your knees are not surpassing the toes as you come down into a low chair. Arms are extended straight out. Then we take our right hand on our right hip. We're gonna do a Pavarita Utkatasana revolve chair. Then we'll take our left elbow across, assist that left elbow, keeping those knees aligned. Hips are facing straight ahead. And then take the hands to heart center and maybe take a fist to the right hand as you press down, rolling that top shoulder back and down. Trying to get the front of the body to the side, the back of the body facing behind. That's the direction. Really good for wringing out the toxins in our kidneys and our liver. Very strengthening. Notice we're lengthening the spine and twisting as well. One more breath here. And then release on the inhale, unravel, unwind, reach up, use the opportunity for a back bend, lengthening, taking our view back on the ceiling, and then we'll come back down into our chair, low chair, like we could stay here forever. Left hand on left hip, right elbow across, Bring the hands together. Try to get them close to your heart center as you twist. And then maybe take your left fist into that right hand as you roll that left shoulder back and down. Keeping those knees aligned. So adjust as needed. And breathe. Come back to that calming breath. More difficult, no doubt, when we're in a twist. One more breath here. And then on the inhale, release, unravel, unwind, reach up, small back bend, and then hands to heart center and down by your side. So we're gonna step out and do some standing sequence. Make sure that you have a brick if you have one. If you don't, you'll be able to work without it. If you do have one, place it at the front of your mat. And we'll need it in just a moment. So we'll come into our warrior two pose, heel to heel or heel to arch alignment. Our front foot, left foot is pointed straight out. Our back foot is turned in 45 degrees. Put our hands on our hips so we center ourselves as we bend into our front leg. You might need to adjust that back foot in order to give yourself space. So we want to be centered, and then we extend our arms out strongly. So that knee, we want that knee to be heading toward that foot. We want to press 
down into the back of that outside foot, strengthening that back arch, and then strong with the arms. Even, check your back hand out, make sure that that's extended and strong, either fingers are separated or together. Come down a little bit lower, feel as if you're isometrically sliding your feet together. That'll really activate everything from top to bottom in your lower half. One more breath here. And then we'll take a reverse, so keep that depth. Reverse warrior. So you can be looking up through your hands, you can gaze forward, reach back, opening this left torso. One more breath here. And then we'll get a little reprieve on that front leg as we take a reversed triangle. We wanna straighten this extended arm, bring it as close to your ear as possible and spiral it. One more breath. And then on your exhale, coming forward into extended side angle. So for extended side angle, you might need to shorten the distance, bending that left knee, taking that left forearm down onto the top, resting it on top of that front leg. Take your left hand, the top of your left hand, right hand, and place it behind you in the lower, uh, your lower back, and then open your shoulder and your chest to the side. So we're in Utita Parsvakanasana, extended side angle really strengthening our legs, twisting our spine open. And then from here, you can take the arm and extend the arm back or up or alongside the ear. If you're alongside the ear, twist as if you're closing a jar. So you're twisting so that you're trying to get that spiraling and trying to get that tricep down onto the ear. And then make sure you're not putting your weight into that left arm. So maybe extend it out for more core strengthening or at least have it relaxed. One more breath here. And then we're gonna prepare for our peak pose, which is going to be half moon Ardha Chandrasana. So staying in that side angle, we take our top of our hand, right hand back behind us again. We're gonna step up part way. So it's generally about a third or a half of the way. We're gonna reach for the brick on any setting that you like, or you can reach down toward the floor taking it off slightly to the left, about two feet ahead of you as you open the hips, standing strongly in that base leg, either looking down or to the side and extending your arm up. Try to be gentle in your resting of the hand onto the brick or onto the ground. One more breath here and then take yourself down with control, touch down and come up to Tadasana Mountain Pose. And take a breath or two, close your eyes. And we gotta do the same thing on the other side. Come back to that breath in and out of your nose. And let's do it on the other side. So we'll step back into our warrior two. Heel to heel or heel to arch alignment. Bending into that front knee, hands on the hips. Centering yourself, adjusting as you need. Turn the back foot in 45 degrees. And then extend those arms out strongly. Bring yourself lower if you can. Really press through the outside of that back foot. Open the chest. One more breath here. And then we take our reverse. Reverse warrior. Looking up or gazing forward. One more breath here. And then straighten. Still in the reverse, we're straightening into a reverse triangle. And then we'll come into extended side angle. So again, gently taking that right forearm down, take the left hand, 
the top of the hand back behind you. Open the chest and the side body. <clears throat> and then if you want to extend the arm back up or alongside the ear, you can stop at any of those places. All is fine. Take the adjustments as you need. And then make sure you're not putting your weight into that right arm. One more breath here. Really twist open. And then take that left hand back behind you. Again, you're going to be stepping up part way, reaching, moving that brick. Maybe it's on the lower setting. Try to do it about on the same as you did on the other side. Slightly off to the right as you shift the weight, you open up the hip, strong base leg, really kick out with that lengthened leg, and maybe you'll take your arm up or you can keep it back behind you. Try to open that front body to the side. Strong base legs, extended leg lifted, opening the hip. One more breath. And then gently touch down and step up to Tadasana. Close your eyes down, take a breath or two. Maybe wipe a bit of sweat off. Come back to that breath, in and out of your nose, expansive breath. And if you noticed when we were in the peak pose, breathing in and out of your nose, keep you calm, it would really help you find that space you need. Allows you to go a bit further than you might otherwise. Okay, so let's step out to use the length of our mat. So we'll take our feet out. In this case, we're preparing for our, what we call goddess pose, Utkatakanasana. So the feet are turned outward. We're going to extend our arms up and we're going to sit down between our feet. So the knees are projecting toward the feet. In this version, we'll take our arms, extending them up. And you want your body upright. So we're not leaning forward in this position. We want to be upright. Come down as low as you can. Comfortably, be sure to breathe. One more breath here. And then press yourself up. Take the arms down. And now we'll come into that same pose, but hands at heart center. Sitting down, upright. Maybe a little lower this time. It's apt to feel a little easier, but then let's come up onto our toes. Heels are up off the mat. Really active, shaking is good. It's you're working hard, your body's being challenged. One more breath with heels up. And then take the heels down and then press yourself up. Release the hands. Let's turn our feet inward into our Prasarita Padatanasana, wide-legged forward bend. We'll extend our arms out. We're gonna do the D version. So we'll take an inhale as we do with all Prasarita Padatanasana. Arms extended out on the exhale and toes turn slightly inward. We exhale, we fold at those hip creases. Coming down and in the D version, we wanna grab on to our toes, outside of our feet, you can bend the knees if you need. This is all about creating more space in the vertebra, in the spine, once again. And so the knees can be slightly bent and grab onto big toe or outside of the feet. Then we're gonna inhale, extending and lengthening the spine, crown of the head's coming forward. Exhale as you pull yourself down even more. So over time, you're trying to get the crown of the head down to the mat. It can take years for that to happen for many of us. Inhale. Lengthen the spine. Exhale as you pull yourself down even more. And then one more time all together. Inhale, lengthen, exhale. Grab on and pull. Use that arm strength. One more breath here. And then let's take our right hand and bring our right hand across. Keep our left hand on that, around that left foot and grip 
with the right hand on that forearm and then pull yourself to the left side. So we have our, we're not lunging, we're simply pulling ourselves in this leftward direction. So we're also twisting, if you like, you can twist the spine once you've lengthened and pulled it down in that direction. One more breath here. Inhaling back to center. And let's take it to the other side. So sliding your hands across. Left hand grabs onto the outside uh, uh, of the right hand. And pull yourself down to that right direction. And you can twist as well. A couple breaths here. Inhaling back to center. And then reach out, lengthening the spine, pressing into those fingertips. Relax the head and the neck, and then bring the hands back between the feet. Bend your knees if they weren't already bent, and then press up on the inhale as you press yourself up to standing all the way up. When you get to the top and you're standing, step or jump the feet together to the center, and then we'll turn to face the other direction on our mat, and we'll come down into a toe balance. So you've finished with your standing sequence, We're gonna be making our way down to the mat. Toe balance, concentrating, keeping our heels up off the ground, as upright as we can. One more breath here. And then we're gonna come into Vadrasana, so I want you to tuck the toes under and sit down onto the heels. This is really good for digestive system as well as strengthening and stretching the toes. So we're sitting down on the toes with the toes tucked underneath. And they're bending and strengthening and then take your hands back behind you. Come into a shoulder retraction, so rolling the shoulders back and down and then pull the arms away from your back body. This is a nice distraction from what you might be feeling in your toes. But it's really good to do this the more often you stretch the toes in this way, the more you'll get used to it, the better off you'll be. One more breath here. And then release. And then we're gonna come back into the toe balance just for a moment here. And then we'll soften down to the mat. Extend the legs out in front of you. We'll come out, down into a boat pose, Navasana. So for Navasana, we have bent knees. Take our hands underneath our thighs, just below the knees, and we lean back. And if your feet are off, you're in boat pose. Your toes are off, you're using core strength. Roll your shoulders back and down, chest is forward. Head and neck are aligned with the spine. And then if you lift, you have your shins parallel with the ceiling. That makes it a little bit more challenging. If you release your hands, that definitely makes it more challenging. You can stay right here. For those who want, you can extend and lengthen. You could lift the arms, but if you do so, keep the shoulders back, chest forward. So wherever you are, point or flex the toes. One more breath here. And then Soften down, give yourself a hug, and we'll do a little bit more core strengthening. After all, we called it Hatha core, so we'll concentrate a bit more. We'll have our legs either straight or knees bent, extending them out in front of you. If you bend the knees a little bit, it'll be a little bit easier for you, so your choice, reaching forward, and we're going to just lower together. So we'll lower to the count of 10. And if you start to shake, that's good. It's strengthening, you're resisting. Uh, I'll start counting now. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Settle down onto your mat. As you settle down, draw the knees up towards your chest, 
We'll come into our Pawan Muktasana. So we squeeze our knees toward our chest, wrapping our arms, trying to get whatever grip you can grip, squeezing and lifting the upper body to meet the knees. This is excellent for digestive system. And breathe here. One more breath. And then release. Keep your knees bent. Bring your feet down. You want your feet about hip width apart. We're preparing for our bridge pose. Setu Bandhasana. So for bridge pose, feet are about hip width apart. You can just barely reach the back of the heels. It's general good rule of thumb. And the first thing we do is we curl that tailbone. So we curl the tailbone. So we press the lumbar spine in to the mat. And then we press into those feet on the inhale as we lift our hips, our pelvis straight to the ceiling. When you can't go any further, take a grip of your hands underneath you, roll the shoulders underneath and press up even higher. And if you wanna make this more challenging, either in this set or a second set, go ahead and lift one leg and come up onto the toes of your base leg. You can point or flex. One more breath here. And then take that right foot down, stay up on the toes and press your left foot up. Clicks and cracks in the joints are fine too. One more breath here. And then left foot down, still up on the toes, press up. And then come down onto those heels and then release and really important, release the shoulders and come down slowly from top of the spine to the bottom of the spine. Take your time placing each vertebra down one at a time until you're down and back to the mat and the tailbone is touching. Then draw your knees in, maybe swaying from side to side or the feet can be down, swaying from side to side, windshield wiping those knees, just releasing any tension you might have created in your lower back. And then extend the legs out and we'll roll onto our front side. We'll do a little bit of back strengthening. So we'll come into our Sphinx pose first. So our legs are extended out behind us. Feet are about hip width apart. Tops of the feet are pressing down. Our arms are close in. Our elbows are directly beneath our shoulders. Our forearms are extended straight out in front of us. And when our Sphinx pose, we press down into the tops of the feet and knees come up slightly and we're here. So rather than just pressing up directly, feel as if you're sliding those forearms. You're trying to get those forearms closer to your body. They're not actually moving. You're just directional, isometrically sliding. You'll feel more activation most likely in that lumbar spine. Relax your shoulders. And then if you'd like to take this option, you can press up into seal or just stay in Sphinx. If you press up, it's natural that the shoulders want to shrug and raise higher, take them back down. And breathe. This will be much stronger, so you'll feel it a bit more. One more breath. And then lower down, and really importantly is to take the rest in between these back strengthening. So take your arms by your side, palms facing up, toes together, heels apart. Take your right cheek down to the mat and rest. You can keep your eyes open, but just have a soft gaze. Or you can close your eyes down. So we'll take one more back strengthening. We're gonna turn to prepare. We turn our head back to center. You can rest your chin down, flip your palms back over so that they're facing downward and take the palm, take the arms away from you, about 45 degrees away from the side body. Separate the feet, or if it's in your practice, you can keep them together. And then you're going to press into the tops of the feet as you inhale and lift 
the top half of your body into our locust. Salabhasana. And if you want, you can lift the lower half as well. So when you lift the lower half, try to think about length. We're lifting, but we're lengthening. So on the inhale, we try to come higher. On the exhale, try to hold. One more breath here. And then soften down. And now let's take the left cheek down to the mat this time. Palms facing up alongside your body. And toes together, heels apart. Continuing with the, the rest in between, gently press yourself back. And we'll come into a traditional child's pose. So our knees are together, heels, uh, feet are together. Our arms are gonna be along our side body, palms facing up. And often we'll come down with the forehead to the mat, but if you've got a brick, take it underneath the forehead you'll notice you get the lengthening and it's more lined rather than when we come down in this manner. But this is fine. But if you've got this prop or something you can rest on, it's a good option to try. Settling down, relaxing any tension you might have created. One more breath here. And then press yourself up. And we'll turn ourselves around. And we'll come into a seated position. We'll come into Baddha Konasana. So we've got our feet together. Our knees are apart. We started in Supta Baddha Konasana. So we'll start, we'll be in a seated version. So you may want to, if your hips are very far uh, below your knees, because oftentimes that's the case for some of us, we'll be up like so, uh, you can come up onto a brick like this, which brings the hips above the knees. That's, it's always good to have a brick handy to get yourself in a more aligned position. So we're sitting upright maybe pressing our elbows into the inside of our legs. And then we'll take a twist, Pavrita Baddha Konasana. So hand, right hand behind, left hand across. First, lengthen the spine by pressing into that hand behind you or those fingertips and then twisting. You can take your gaze back if that's comfortable for your neck, back behind you, or just gazing out to the side. Relax the shoulders, relax the head and the neck. One more breath here. And then release, inhale, come back to center, and then we'll take it to the other side. So press the hand back behind you or the fingertips you can bend your elbow behind you if that helps press and get length in the spine. And then the right hand comes across as we twist Pavarita Baddha Konasana. One more breath here. And then release and inhale, come back to center. And this time we'll come forward, Uttanasana. Baddha Konasana, Uttanasana. So we're going to come forward. As we come forward, the first thing we want to do is rotate the hips. So we're just moving the hips first and then we'll lengthen the spine. But notice my chest is coming forward, so I'm not rounding here. I'm lengthening the spine. Chest is coming forward. My view is out. Maybe I take my hands and pull myself a bit more forward. As long as you're feeling a strong stretch in your groin and inner thighs, you're also lengthening the spine, and then you can relax your head and your neck, and you can take your gaze down. One more breath here. On the inhale, press yourself back up to seated. 
and then take the knees together, assist, and then we'll take our feet, extend them out. We're coming into staff pose, dandasana. So for staff pose, we have strong legs, flexing those legs in front of us. We're sitting upright, we're in a 90 degree angle here. We take our hands to our side, alongside the hips, roll our shoulders back and down. Take the chin down slightly because we're not opening up the throat in this position. We want our spine all the way from top to bottom to be upright. And we're in this strong pose, Dandasana. Having the best posture that we could hope for. And breathe. And then release, shake it out. And then let's take the legs apart into wide-legged saddle pose. Legs are apart. Take an inhale and then on the exhale, rotate from the hips, coming forward. If this is as far as you can come, perfectly fine. Just rest the hands down, maybe grab onto the outside. If you can then lengthen more, come more forward again with that chest being the lead. And then maybe you wanna grab onto your big toes or your ankles, whatever you can grab onto, because then you can use that as leverage to maybe pull and assist yourself to come even further forward. But wherever you are, just hold and breathe. Relax the head and the neck. One more breath here. And then release. Assist your legs, bringing them back together. We're gonna to work a little bit more core as we make our way down, further to the mat. We'll extend our arms out again, and then as we make our way down, if you wanna make it a little more challenging, you'll notice I'll lift my legs up. My feet will be slightly off the mat, but let's roll down, and then we can lift those legs, and then roll down with control or keep the feet down. So when you start to shake, just resist, strengthen, touching the spine down, all the way down. Just take your time. And then once we're down, settling down onto the mat, we're gonna just return to our happy baby we had before, so taking the feet up, grabbing onto the outsides of the feet or the toes, whatever you can grab onto, pulling, relax your head and your neck, pulling those knees down to each side, out to the side bodies. You can roll from side to side or you can stay in one place. You could extend and lengthen one leg at a time. Just enjoy this pose, hopefully feeling a bit more open at this stage of the practice as we wind down. We'll have opened the hips and the groin. One more breath here. And then release, bring your knees apart this time and your feet are to the outsides of the mat. And for this twist, what we're going to do is we're gonna keep those feet on the outside of the mat, extend your arms out, and we'll take the twist by just allowing those knees to soften. So the knees come down, you haven't moved your feet at all. And then to get a bit more of this stretch, just a slightly different angle, take that right foot on top of the outside of your left leg, and then look either up or in the opposite direction. You always want the shoulders pressed down onto the mat in this position and your head and neck to be relaxed. One more breath here. Then release that right foot if you've placed it on top and assisted. Take the knees back to center and make sure your feet are still on the outsides of the mat and then allow the knees to soften to the left side. So this time your view can either be up or to the opposite direction and then take that left foot on top of the outside of the right leg. So you just feel this twist in a slightly different place than maybe the way you've been doing it if you've been doing it previously. One more breath here. 
and then release, inhaling back to center. And then to prepare for Shavasana, we'll take our legs straight out, lengthen the legs, lengthen the arms. We're gonna take three breaths together. We're gonna inhale through our nose and we're gonna exhale through the mouth. So let's go, inhale, exhale. Inhale, and exhale. And one more, all together. Inhale, and exhale. Keep exhaling, keep exhaling. Get as much carbon dioxide out as you can. Get rid of that stale air. And then to prepare for your relaxation, Take your arms along your side body. If you've got a wall, you can take your legs up against the wall. If you prefer, you can take your knees bent and knees together, perfectly fine. You could come back into Baddha Konasana, Supta Baddha Konasana, whatever uh, position is most relaxing to you. The most important thing is that you relax for the next few minutes. Don't ever leave out Shavasana. It is the most important complete to complete the practice. So close your eyes, shake out whatever tension you may still have. Maybe take a bolster underneath the knees if you have a pillow or a bolster nearby. That's a really nice prop to have. And you can also take something underneath your head just to lift the head slightly. Close down the eyes for the next few minutes and enjoy your Shavasana. you can feel free to stay in your Shavasana longer. But as we're live, to come out of your Shavasana, begin to observe your breath and bring some movement into your fingers and your toes. And keeping your eyes closed, draw your knees up towards your chest and then allow your knees to Soften either to the right side or the left side of your body and then take your hands and create a pillow for your head as you sit and rest on your side body. And then press yourself up gently using your using your arm strength. Press yourself up into a comfortable seated position, whatever that is for you. Could be cross-legged, could be kneeling. And then find that comfortable position, eyes closed or a soft gaze. You can bring your hands to heart center or they can be alongside. <clears throat> Just 
So take the time to thank yourselves for participating in your practice of yoga, for breathing, for moving, for focusing, hopefully finding more, more stillness, less stress, more clarity in your mind and try to sustain that feeling as you make your way through the rest of your day and through your weekend. Thank you for practicing with me. We can all say together, namaste. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you another time in the future. Namaste.